overview of today's talk. So we are going to look at our CPP Dumbo, who executes our C++ programs. We'll revisit numerical computations, specifically looking at how the values, numerical values are handled and how arithmetic operations are done by our CPP Dumbo. Then we'll actually program Mr. Dumbo to do some numerical computations. I have already made the announcement for Makeup Lab, so we are done with it. So as we have already noticed, our C++ Dumbo can read and understand programs written in C++, and of course, he can execute these programs. We have already seen how Dumbo allocates memory locations to store values and manipulates those values. We have not yet explicitly modeled how the Dumbo gets our program and understands that program. That process actually is called compilation. The program that we write is written in terms of a lot of instructions which are put together in what we call a computer file which is stored on the disk of a computer. We have not discussed the disk and such mechanisms yet, but you will become familiar when you do the first uh, lab assignment as to how exactly these instructions are given, how do you log in and so on. So effectively an abstract model is that Dumbo interacts with us on a computer terminal in which it shows some sign, typically ending with a dollar symbol, saying, okay, give me your command. So if we give it a command to read a program and understand it, which is called compilation, we shall see some example of that, Mr. Dumbo can actually take our entire program, all instructions, understand those instructions, prepare the appropriate memory locations, whatever, and subsequently when we tell him, please execute my program, it will execute those instructions. That's the roughly abstract mechanism. So here is a session with CPP Dumbo or C++ Dumbo. What you see in the first line in brackets is called the current directory. So when you, the, the directory is a notion of building some kind of cabinets inside the disk. So a directory is sort of a description of what each cabinet is labeled with. So here is a directory called local host. Afterwards you see that sign dollar. This dollar is actually the CPP's way of, of telling me that I'm waiting for you. What I have written here is called PWD. PWD effectively gives me what is known as working directory or present working directory. So slash home slash DBP is my home directory. If I say CD, CPP, CD means change directory. So this will change directory to another name called CPP. So within this directory, there is another directory, CPP. It is indicated on my terminal by Dumbo, saying I have gone to CPP now. Again, it gives a dollar sign. When I give it a command LS, which stands for list, it will actually list out all the files which exist inside that directory or in that filing cabinet. So which are these files? There is a file called logcalc.cpp. As we shall see later in this lecture, logcalc is actually a C++ program to approximately calculate the natural logarithm of a given number. There is another program called square root.cpp. There is another file called a.out. It's a very funny name, but it's a standard name. As I told you, CP, uh, CPP Dumbo takes my program, which is written in a file with a file extension called CPP. That is why you see logcalc.cpp, square root.cpp, et cetera. When it compiles that program, it actually understands that and creates internal instruction for itself, which are actually effectively machine language sort of instructions, which we don't understand. These compiled instructions are also assembled in a file, in a computer file. We can give a name for that file, which Dumbo faithfully executes. But if we don't, it will give a default name to such compiled instructions called a.out. So if you don't give any option, uh, CPP Dumbo will take my program, compile it into a file called a.out. Those are the instructions which it will later execute. Here is a command. When you say dollar sign here, again I give a command, less logcalc.cpp. Less or more, a funny ways of the operating system which Dumbo follows called Unix or actually Linux. Less means 
show me all the lines of the instruction of this program, but only don't show all of them. Show me less of them. What does less mean? Show me one screen full. When I press a return key, then show me the remaining line, so that you don't have to worry about lines going beyond your vision and so on. Here is a program, logcalc.cmp. We shall revisit the program later, but it is worthwhile to look at that program to understand how uh, uh, Dumbo is instructed in C++. You are already familiar with the first three lines, hash include IO stream using namespace std semicolon slash slash this program computes log. Okay, the third line is a comment meant for us. First two lines we take it as sort of standard instructions for Dumbo. We'll later on worry about them. The next one says int main, which is the beginning of my program. Float x comma w comma area equal to zero. You can see area equal to zero can also be specified in the declaration of a name for a location. So that will initialize the value of area to zero. Then I'm saying int precision equal to 1000. Then I'm giving an output instruction to Mr. Dumbo, which will show out this string. Enter the number whose natural log needs to be computed. Notice at the end I have written nl. Last time we had a funny string called backslash n. nl also means the same thing, end of line. That's the symbol which Dumbo understands and takes the cursor to the next line on your screen. Next, please. Here is a program. Again, as I said, we will revisit this program later, but just for curiosity's sake, this is how logarithm will be calculated. So I asked the Dumbo to get an input from me for a value x. x is the number whose logarithm I want to compute. And then there is a for or repetition loop for int i equal to 1, i less than equal to precision, i equal to i plus 1. And then repetitive actions for this iteration is W is equal to x minus 1 by precision. Area is equal to area plus W by 1 plus i minus 1 star W. Very complex. We shall actually examine this example in detail. And then it says see out a string called ln, opening bracket, followed by x, followed by a string called closing bracket and equal to, followed by area. This will actually print logarithm of so much so is this much area. We shall see why area is being printed later. And then return zero, that ends it. Please note that we started this description of the program through a command given to Dumbo called less uh, uh, logcalc.cpp. That means we have asked it to show us something on the screen. After showing all of that, the last line again, Mr. Dumbo says, okay, I'm now ready for any further command from you. Next. At this stage, I can ask Mr. Dumbo to compile my C program. The command for that is C++ logcalc.cpp minus O logcalc. What this means is, Mr. Dumbo, please compile my program using C++ programming language. The program is written in a file called logcalc called cpp. But when you compile and understand it, put your understanding not in a dot out, which is the default file, but put it in a file called logcalc, because that is the program by which I understand my instructions. Dumbo will do that, and again give you a dollar symbol, at which step you give another funny command, dot slash logcalc. Why dot slash? Why not just logcalc? After all, Dumbo has just compiled my program, and it knows that the instructions so compiled are in a file called logcalc. We shall see why dot slash is required, and we shall later on see why we can, how we can remove that dot slash completely. But for the time being, we'll go by this command. When I say dot slash log calc and press return, Dumbo starts executing my instruction. You will recall briefly from the program that we had seen, there was an instruction which says C out and it will give you out string. What was that string? Enter the number whose natural log needs to be computed. So this is being shown to us on the screen by Mr. Dumbo. Now it will wait for us till eternity, because there is a C in command, getting in the value of x. I type here 1, and Dumbo will print log of 1 is 0. It will be interesting to see what happens to our program if you give minus 7, for example. So I was asking you, if instead of 1 I give minus 7, what should happen? If 
What is logarithm of minus 7? Not defined. What do you think Dumbo will do? Well, you find out what Dumbo does. When we say error, what exactly is the way of Dumbo telling you that you have given a wrong input? Luckily, Dumbo doesn't shout at us. It can only show things on the screen. Next. Here is the re-execution of the same program. At that command line, I say dot slash log calc. Again, it will say enter the number whose natural log needs to be computed. I have given 2.73. And it will now calculate executing that algorithm, which, was, which had an iterative computation, which we shall see later. Log of 2.73, it will show as 1.00485. Any guess on what 2.73 resembles? Yes, logarithm of E is 1 actually. So this is how exactly we interact with CPP Dumbo. When you do not just this lab, which is a preliminary lab, but subsequent lab, you will get to see all of these details, probably without fully understanding them, but don't bother. Please note that I gave an example, I think, earlier, when you are trying to learn to drive the car, you will often be curious about how the internal combustion engine works, what happens when you press an accelerator, where does the cable go, etc. But it is not required to understand those mechanisms in complete details, because you want to drive the car. So as long as you understand how to instruct Dumbo to do your bidding, that is okay. The instructions might sound cryptic, but that's okay. You give those cryptic instructions, Later on in this course, we shall understand all that cryptic matter completely. Next. Here is a modified program. Again, my friend has asked what that first line means. So here, what I have done in between is I have taken that program, which was written in C++, and modified it suitably. I have created another version of the program. That version of the program I have given the name Log Calc MP. MP actually stands for multiple procedures. Note that earlier in that program, we had a value for precision called 1000, an arbitrary value. I wanted to see what, how does the logarithm is computed if I give precision 10, precision 100, precision 1000, etc. So I put another iteration inside to say first calculate logarithm using precision 10, then with 100, then with 1000. We shall see that program later in the lab next week. However, since I have a new program called log calc MP, I must ask Dumbo to compile that and understand it. So I give the same command. So I say C++ log calc CMP dot CPP minus O log calc MP. And then afterwards I execute that command, execute that compiled program, ask Dumbo to execute it by saying dot slash log calc MP. Again, why dot slash? We'll forget about it, right? But now, see the execution of the program. It again asks me, enter the number whose natural log needs to be co computed. I have given the value 2.71828.13. Is closer to E? Yes. So I would expect a value 1. Notice that the log calculated for that with precision 10 is 1.05643. With precision 100 is 1.00545. And with precision 1000, it is 1.00054. Obviously, larger the precision, the better is the accuracy of my result. How exactly this is happening? We shall see that in details when we understand how Dumbo does numerical computations and how we can instruct Dumbo to execute instructions in a repetitive fashion using our conditional decision making. Next. And of course, when Dumbo finishes, as usual, it comes back on the screen with this kind of sign which shows me which directory in his cabinet I am in and shows that dollar symbol, ready to take any other command. So Dumbo is almost like a genie. Tell it to do something, it does it, and again says what next. Okay, next. So now we try to understand how Dumbo handles numerical values. This example we had seen earlier, it, when we specify int x, for example, we had assumed that in the cupboards, that uh, in, the, in the cupboard memory cupboard that Dumbo has, it will preserve a one drawer, label it as x, and we'll remember that the drawer x has to contain integer values. So int x reserves one location in memory. 
What kind of values can it store? Can it store, store 25? Yes. Can it store minus 207? Of course, yes. What is the maximum and minimum value? Surprisingly, our C++ Dumbo has a very funny rule. Please don't give me any number larger than 2 to the power 31 minus 1. Please don't give me any number smaller than minus 2 to the power 31 minus 1. This looks kind of odd, right? I mean, we speak of three-digit numbers, four-digit numbers, ten-digit numbers, positive or negative. But Dumbo does not seem to understand our notion of size of a number. We measure the size of number in terms of number of digits that the number has. Digit means decimal digit, zero to nine. Unfortunately, Dumbo does not use a decimal system. Two to the power 31, as we know it, is very close to 2 into 10 to the power 9. Effectively, we are talking about 9-digit numbers. Dumbo cannot handle numbers larger or smaller, sorry, larger than this, or negative numbers smaller than minus of this. How do we store larger numbers? By the way, this is important. Dumbo does not in intrinsically understand decimal arithmetic inside. Outside, he makes a facade of understanding your decimal numbers perfectly well. That is why in our programs and all, we don't have to write binary numbers. We write decimal numbers only. But when Dumbo executes my instructions for arithmetic operations, internally it translates all decimal numbers into some funny binary format. We need not worry about how it does that. And that is why these funny limitations come up. Otherwise, it can do all the computations that we so desire. But again, come back to the question. How do we store larger numbers? For example, if I have a larger than uh, nine-digit number, what do I do? Well, my CPP Dumbo has a special instruction. Instead of say, saying int x, if I say long x, long as in larger number of digits, with long x, Mr. Dumbo is able to store numbers in the range of plus 2 to the power 63 minus 1 2 minus 2 to the power 63 minus 1. Again, this funny power of 2 comes in. We shall worry later as to why and how that happens. But it is good enough for us to understand that with int x, int a, int b, int count, whatever, we'll be able to roughly store 9 digit numbers plus or minus. And with long x, long y, whatever, we'll be able to store about 19 digit numbers. That is good enough precision for most of the integer operations. But that is not the end of scientific calculations. Scientific calculations, for example, Avogadro's number. Anybody remembers what is Avogadro's number? 10 to the power? 23. Mr. Dumbo will go fat. Why? 23 is okay with long x? No, it's not okay. Because Avogadro's number is a fraction. And we are talking about integer numbers. Our CPP Dumbo has tremendous aversion of mixing integer numbers with decimal fractions. It does not understand decimal fractions when we talk about integers. Integers must mean pure integer numbers, nothing else. So we have to find out a way of storing fractional values. Incidentally, Dumbo ordinarily, even our CPP Dumbo, cannot understand fraction in the conventional way. How do we understand fraction? 3 by 5, 4 by 8, 3 by 7, etc. These fractions don't mean anything to Dumbo. The CPP Dumbo understands integer values, and as we shall see shortly, it also understands decimal values such as 4.71, minus 2.894, etc. We must now understand how CPP Dumbo handles what you call fractional numbers. Next, please. Oh, this is some more explanation which I already gave. The real Dumbo uses binary or base 2 representation. Thus, limiting values are expressed in power of 2. We have already seen that. For the time being, we'll continue to believe that Dumbo uses decimal values. That is, base 10 representation. We need not worry about how it does it. Actually, for integer numbers, decimal and binary numbers have exact one-to-one -one correspondence. So there is no difference whatsoever when we give a decimal value to Dumbo and Dumbo internally translates it to binary value and handles it, as far as integer arithmetic is concerned. Sadly, for fractional values, which are 
expressed by us in the form of 2.713 or minus 17.28, etc. The decimal values have to be handled, decimal fractional values have to be handled completely different. First, we will try to understand how PP handles these fractional values in terms of pure decimal notation that we use. Next, it uses a representation called floating point representation. Point refers to decimal point or internally for CPP a binary point. We will not refer to anything binary from now onwards, hoping that Dumbo understands decimal notation. So, we provide CPP with a mechanism to declare memory locations which can contain such fractional values by using a new name called float y. Float y is a designation where Dumbo preserves a location called y in his memory drawer, but inside y it will not keep a single integer number as earlier. It will instead store a floating point format number. So what is a floating point format? The number y actually is represented by two components. One component is called mantissa and the other is called exponent. This is actually a standard scientific way of representing numbers. For example, the number value will be taken as m multiplied by b raised to e. So m is mantissa, e is exponent. What is b? b is the base of such representation. b could be 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 18, whatever, whatever. As far as we are concerned, the base b is 10. But as all of you can guess, as far as Dumbo is concerned, internally after it compiles your program and starts executing it, its internal base will be 2. And of course it will have to do a lot of conversion from decimal to binary, binary to decimal, etc., etc. Again, we will not bother about it at all at this stage. So we will assume that CPP understands decimal numbers, but when it has to store very large or very small numbers like 10 raised to uh, uh, 28 or 10 raised to minus 39 with some lots of fractional digits etc then it will use this form m multiplied by b into e so let us look at how these numbers are stored here is some example this is a drawer which we call let's say x or y or whatever in this drawer dumbo has made two partitions one is called mantissa, one is called exponent. Here the value stored is minus 4127. Here the value stored is 11. Here is another example. In this drawer, Dumbo has stored 19462, a positive number, as mantissa, and minus 21 as exponent. As far as Dumbo is concerned, the first value is always taken to mean 0.4127 multiplied by 10 raised to 11. Notice that 11 is the exponent and 0.4127 is taken to be the mantissa where the value of the mantissa is stored as an integer uh, 4127. Of course, this is a negative number. And so this number is minus 0.4127 into 10 raised to power 11. This number, which has an integer part m as 19,462 and exponent part as minus 21, is interpreted by number always to mean the value 0.19462 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 20. You are familiar with this notation? All of us as scientists and engineers would necessarily use this notation to represent large or small numbers. For example, we would write this first number as minus 412.4127E11. You all agree with this? This is how we will write that number. E is an exponent. We assume it to be 10 to the power 11. So this is mantissa for us. Please note, however, that as far as we are concerned, in our own handling of these numbers, we can write the same number also as minus 41.27 E9. Do you agree that this and this are same numbers? Minus 41.27 E9 is minus 4.127 E10 or minus 0.4127 E11. So I can keep shifting the decimal point by adjusting the exponent and still the value of the number will be same. That is the reason why this format for Dumbo is called a floating point format. As far as we are concerned, the point can float anywhere. The correct value will be represented by adjusting the exponent appropriately. 
So what Dumbo does is, for us to facilitate writing the numbers, either as this, or as this, or anything else. Please note, in our programs, when we write values, or as input when we give a value to Dumbo, we can give it either like this, or like this, or in any one format. It doesn't matter. Dumbo will take that value, will move the decimal point automatically to the leftmost point like this, and will store this integer as mantissa, and this value as exponent. So this is the CPP Dumbo's way of handling decimal fractional numbers, large or small. Now, here is the problem. Because this width is constant of the drawer. How do we know the width is constant? Well, when we looked at integer, what was int x? We said int x can be at most a nine digit number kind of thing. Do you remember that? Now, obviously, each drawer is exactly the same length. So if Dumbo has to make two parts of that drawer, it has to designate some larger part maybe for mantissa and some part for exponent. Please note that both of them can be positive or negative. So he has to give enough space for that. Consequently, what happens is that our CPP Dumbo has only about seven decimal digits to store for mantis. And it has only about two digits, or just about three. So the exponent can be 100 or minus 100 or plus 100. Whereas the fractional part, the mantisa, can be about seven decimal digits. Again, we will have a problem because seven decimal digits may not give us adequate precision. We might want a larger number of digits to be accurately represented and used for calculation. Then just as we had long Y there or long Z, again Mr. Dumbo has a provision to say double Z. This long or double can be conceptually abstracted to mean a, a larger cabinet with larger drawers. Just the double the size of the normal drawer. So ordinary memory locations have some size drawer, the larger which, which is used for storing double or long, etc., have double size drawers. That is the best abstract comparison. In summary, the, the first, uh, like uh, everybody is familiar with Kronecker. Have you heard this name? Kronecker delta is an important mathematical notion. Anyway, he said, God made natural numbers, the rest is work of man. I have added to it that humans made fractions and decimal numbers, the rest is the work of Dumbos. So you have to be very careful while dealing with Dumbos. Dumbos deal with numbers in a very peculiar fashion. If we don't understand them, we will assume we have given very nice instructions, correct instructions, but the result that we'll get may be all crap. We shall examine what happens when internally computations are made. Next. Yeah. Okay. Here is an example of what happens in floating point. Let us say I have declared to Mr. Dumbo a memory location W which contains a floating point value, float W. I have also declared another location or drawer, Avogadro. Remember I asked you about Avogadro's number? This is approximately Avogadro's number, 6.023, 10 to the power 23. Notice that we could not have stored this as an integer number, although it's an integer number. It is too big, so we store it as a fraction. Mantisa will be stored as 0 0.6023, effectively. 6023. And exponent will be stored as not 23 but 24. Dumbo will rationalize all that. That is fine. So it has stored this number called Avogadro. It has stored another number called Y which is 1.5. Now you want to add Avogadro's number to Y. A legitimate addition that humans can do very well. Unfortunately when Mr. Dumbo tries to add and create a sum for W what will be the value of W? The problem is, even in human calculations, if we sit down and write down the long form of Avogadro's number and then represent 1.5, whatever, that 1.5 will come somewhere at the fag end of that number. Okay? And then the final number will be a 23-digit long number, but it, the two numbers, Avogadro number and W, will differ only in the last digits. Unfortunately, Mr. Dumbo, when dealing with floating point representation has no mechanism to store anything beyond seven digits in mantissa. 
So all subsequent digits beyond seven digits will be simply lost. This is called a round of error. Mr. Dumbo simply ignores such digits beyond seven. And if you have used the double kind of thing, it will ignore digits like that. But whatever, there will be a limit. So this is the first example of how careful we have to be when we are instructing Dumbo to handle uh, fractional numbers, large or small, using floating point representation. So in conclusion, Mr. Dumbo will think W is same as Avogadro. Although mathematically, W and Avogadro are not same as far as we are concerned. We have to contend with this remarkable dumbness of Mr. Dumbo and handle that appropriately using some other algorithms. Later on, when we study more programming, uh, you, can, you can see that packages have been written to provide what is known as a large precision arithmetic. So you can actually write computer program to make even Mr. Dumbo do arithmetic with precision of even 2,000 digits, 5,000 digits. But all those programs have to be artificially written. Basically, you have to teach Mr. Dumbo how to handle large values with larger precision. Ordinarily, Dumbo does this. Next. Dumbo can handle mixed arithmetic when it has to handle numbers. For example, some number is integer, some number is float. Dumbo is able to convert from float to int and vice versa as required. So look at this, int x equal to 10, float y equal to 6.5. One is integer, another is float. If I say x equal to y, x will not become 6.5 because x is declared as integer, x will become 6 instead. Please note that when a floating point value is assigned to integer, the value is rounded up, rounded down. So only the integer part is retained, fractional part is simply forgotten. If instead I say 360 by x, note these are not to be considered as statements given in sequence. Each one is an independent statement. We are looking at what Dumbo will do anytime we give it either this or that or that. So don't execute them in sequence. So with the values of x as 10 and y as 6.5, if I say 360 by x, integer result is calculated because x is integer and 360 is also integer. However, if I say 360.0 dash slash x, here x is integer and 360.0 is considered as a floating point value. A point to be noted, Dumbo always interpret actual numerical values that we write as either integer or floating point depending upon whether a decimal point exists or it does not exist. So 360 and 360.0 are two completely internal, different internal representations for Dumbo. One is an integer representation, whereas 360.0 will be represented using our floating point format. And once there is a floating point format and an integer format, where these two different numbers are to be arithmetically operated upon, then it uses its own conventions. For example, a float and an integer in a mixed uh, arithmetic operation, the result will be float. What will happen if you say 360 by y? Well, what I told you just now, 360 is integer, but y is float. So the result will be float. What will be the value? You can check that up when you execute the program. Next. Here is a simple numerical program. We had seen this earlier. Int main, float c, c out, centigrade temperature, end line, c in c, c out, Fahrenheit, C star 9 by 5 plus 32. Please note that I am not computing the value and assigning it to a different uh, drawer or in the memory. I don't need to do that. If I have a simple computation, I can actually make the C out instruction to do that computation directly. And the computed value will be outputted by Dumbo. So when Dumbo executes the last line, it will put the string Fahrenheit and it will simply put the value of C multiplied by 9 by 5 plus 32. Notice that C is float, and therefore you will get the right result in, in floating. You can execute that and see what happens next. In general, the arithmetic operations have to be, first of all, they have to be explicitly stated. In algebra, if you say x, y, you automatically imply x multiplied by y. In algebra, if you say 3.6z, you always mean 3.6 multiplied by z. There is no such implication. Dumbo is really dumb. If you mean any arithmetic operation, you must explicitly write that arithmetic operation. The typical arithmetic operations are 
star which stands for multiplication slash which stands for division percent symbol which stands for modulus operation we shall see an example plus for addition minus for subtraction these are all binary operators that means there are two operands connected by one operator and they will result in a value multiplication and division have higher precedence than plus and minus multiplication and division within themselves have equal precedence so if you say a star b slash c what will happen first well whenever there are equal precedence operators this c plus plus dumbo will execute them from left to right that is the order so within the equal precedence anywhere the expression is evaluated from left to right same thing for plus and minus for multiplication and division is important because a star b slash c whether you multiply an a and b first and then divide by c or whether you divide b by c first and then multiply by a would have different results if a b c are integers if they are floating point numbers it may not matter but if they are integers it will matter hell of a lot so be careful about the precedence in case of any doubt you can put parenthesis to overwrite the default precedence again more or less a standard mechanism next you must write comments as i had already explained to you last time because programs are not only read by dumbo compilers but also by other programmers so extra description first style is slash slash that's the kind of comments we have been seeing the other kind of older comment style which comes from c programming language where in an entire line or multiple lines you start one line with slash star and then keep writing commentary if you want complete paragraph or something at the end you put star slash the whole paragraph is treated as a comment this style is recommended only in certain cases ordinarily that may not be a good idea we shall see why later here is an important idea reemphasized of reassignment you might have seen statements like count equal to count plus 1 etc some of you may be wondering what is this here is an example int m equal to 5 m is equal to 3 star m plus 1 this is called reassignment and i would like you to emphatically remember that this is not a mathematical equation i hope all of you can see that very clearly if this were a mathematical equation it is absurd because m equal to 3 star m plus 1 can be immediately reduced to mean 0 equal to 2 star m plus 1 and that cannot be true even if for whatever value of m this cannot be a true equation at all so this is not an equation this is an instruction to mr dumbo mr dumbo look at the right hand side of this expression right hand side of the equal to symbol it says 3 star m plus 1 don't bother about the left hand side the right hand side is the expression which i want you to evaluate using existing values of those variables like m or whatever one so here is what dumbo will do dumbo will calculate the value of the right hand side which for m equal to 5 works out to 5 into 3 plus 1 which is 16 now it will take this value and look at the left hand side left hand side incidentally happens to be m it could have been z b count whatever whatever is the left hand side that is the drawer in which this final value will be kept if it so happens that that drawer's value was used earlier in the right hand side expression so be it that old value will be destroyed so after executing this reassignment this drawer will now contain the value 16 and not 5 and if you reexecute it the next time the expression will be evaluated using m equal to 16 Resulting is 16 multiplied by 348 plus 149, and m will become 49. In fact, this kind of reassignment is used as the kernel of almost all our iterative loops, which we shall see later in in the examples. Next, common programming pattern for repeat n times with i taking different values. Here, you can cleanly specify the iteration in a in a format where you have a previous statements. followed by this funny looking pattern for xxx semicolon yyy semicolon zzz and in opening bracket and closing bracket www and followed by next statement this for block it is as it is called is an extremely important programming construct by which we can stipulate to mr dumbo please do certain things again and again and again using what is known as a for loop next try to draw a spiral using your k turtle those of you who have not done the uh, lab you can try that in fact in the labs on monday tuesday wednesday and others can try it next week 
int i for i equal to 1, i less than 6, i equal to i plus 1. Execute whatever instructions you want. These are the repetitive actions. End of that. All the repetitive actions stated will be executed first with i equal to 1, then with i equal to 2, then with i equal to 3, then with i equal to 4, then with i equal to 5. But when i become 6, I will get out. That is the iteration last time I had briefly explained through a flowchart. I will try and prepare some notes which I'll post on the page so that those of you who had some difficulty in understanding that flowchart can figure that out. Next. Here is a detailed explanation what happens. First, xxx is executed. So it must be an assignment statement. It is called loop initialization. Next, evaluate condition yyy. This is called loop test. If that test is true, that means answer to that question is yes, okay, you go ahead with step two, otherwise false statement execution ends complete. If you get into the for loop, you execute www, which is called the loop body. At the end of executing loop body, you execute the increment i equal to i plus one, which is written as zzz, that is called loop increment. This is how it continues. Condition the loop condition, which is same as the condition that we put in any if statement we had seen earlier. What kind of format can we use for condition? Conditions are always written in terms of some value, some operator, some other value. The operator is typically called a comparison operator. So A op B is the standard format of a condition, where operator can be less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to. Equal equal means equal to. Don't use equal to symbol alone. Equal equal has to be used. Why? Because Dumbo, whenever we give a single equal to symbol, it thinks it's an assignment. When we mean comparison, we have to say equal equal. So A equal equal zero means is A equal to zero. Whereas A equal to zero means take zero and put it in A. They're two completely different parallels. Similarly, not equal is written as exclamation mark equal to. Again, Dumbo is funny. We have to understand the funny symbolisms. So equal equal is equal to, uh, exclamation mark equal is not equal. Conditions can be combined. You are familiar with logical operators and or not? All of you are familiar? Good. So and or not can be put together. There is a truth table for these and or not logical operators. For example, true and true is true. True and false is false. True or true is true, false or true is true, but false or false is false. This is the mechanism of and and or. Those of you who don't understand, again, can refer to any book on logic or simple maths. Dumbo is capable of understanding these, provided we give him instructions like this. A greater than zero and A less than equal to nine. Again, notice that and is not written as a single and symbol. Two ampersands are used, and and. Because for a single and, Dumbo has a different meaning. You see, Dumbo's language evolved from scratch. So there are some very funny things in Dumbo's language called C++. It does not understand English, so we have to understand, we have to understand the symbolism. So and and is conjunction, which is called and, and two vertical bars is called or, which is disjunction. There are more examples of for. I will just leave this slide. You can read that slide on the, on the web page. I wanted to quickly conclude with the example of the numerical calculation of natural logarithm. Everybody is familiar with this definition of logarithm? Log of x, natural logarithm of x, is actually integral of 1 to a, log of a, for example, if a number a is given, log of a is defined as integral 1 to a, 1 by x dx. How do you calculate this? Dumbo cannot integrate or differentiate. So dy by dx, d square, y by dx square, etc. don't mean anything to him. So we have to use arithmetic operations to calculate this. Fortunately, there is an arithmetic equivalent approximation to calculate this integral in terms of Riemann integral. Everybody is familiar with Riemann integral? Everybody is familiar with integral uh, 0 to 1 fx dx? Good. Basically, we try to find out the area under the curve fx equal to 1 by x from 1 to a. And that area is equal to the value of the integral. Numerically, that area can be calculated. We can approximate that area by small rectangles. Here is what is known as Riemann integral or Riemann sums. Incidentally, how many of you have visited Wikipedia? Can you raise your hands? Fairly large numbers. 
How many of you have not visited Wikipedia? Can you raise your hands? Okay. Very, very important to locate Wikipedia site and visit it regularly. It is far superior to Google in terms of knowledge input. The definition of logarithm, for example, definition of Riemann integral, and definition of counting this uh, Riemann integral using an animation is all included in Wikipedia site. So those of you who want may visit that for better mathematical. Anyway. Here is what we wish to do. Calculate sum of areas of all rectangles between 1 and A. So notice here what is happening. How many rectangles should I have? Well, I don't know how many. I can have only one rectangle. Obviously, if there is one rectangle, I will get a very funny value. But if I have multiple rectangles, I will get perhaps a better one. What I need to do now? Calculate the area of this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, and add them. If I add them up, that is the approximation to the integral and therefore the approximation to logarithm of A. So how many rectangles? Well, I have said more the merrier. So let's say I take 1000 rectangles. Now what is the total width of rectangles? A minus 1. Let's go back to the previous slide. This is A, this is 1. So the total width is A minus 1. So width of any rectangle will be A minus 1 divided by number of rectangles. So A minus 1 divided by 1000. I call it W. What is the x-coordinate of the left side of i-th rectangle? I have given a formula here, x equal to 1 plus i minus 1 into w. And what is the height of i-th rectangle, which is 1 of x, which is equal to 1 upon 1 plus i minus 1 by w. Sounds complex. Let us quickly look at some diagrams. Here I am assuming that this is i-th rectangle, the shaded rectangle. Notice that i-th rectangle, this is first, this is second, this is actually third. I have tried to represent the width of this rectangle. Since width of all rectangles is same, if I have n rectangles, then w will be equal to a minus 1 by n. Agreed? This is a, this is 1. So a minus 1 by n is the width of any rectangle. What is the x-coordinate of i-th rectangle? I have represented x-coordinate as 1 plus i minus 1 by w. Let us examine whether this is correct by giving some value to i. This is apparently third rectangle in my diagram. This is first, this is second, this is third. If I put i equal to 3, I get the value 3 minus 1, that is 2, w. 2w two plus 1. Well, that is correct. This point is 1. This point is 1 plus w. And this point is 1 plus 2w. Agreed? So 1 plus 2w is the correct coordinate of the third rectangle, x coordinate beginning. Similarly, ith rectangle will have this as the value of x coordinate. So x coordinate of the ith rectangle of the left corner is this. Now, if that is so, then what is the height of that? Well, that is the beauty. The height is determined by the nature of the function. The function is fx equal to 1 upon x. So if x is the coordinate value for this, the height h will be equal to 1 by x. And that is nothing but 1 upon whatever formula I wrote for the ith uh, uh, coordinate. Now you can see, I can easily calculate the area of this rectangle. What is the area of a rectangle? Width multiplied by height. Width w is known, height is known. So for any ith rectangle, I can calculate the area. And then I can set up an iteration to calculate the sum of those areas. I am saying float x, area equal to 0, and w. I am, I am announcing all of these as uh, uh, sort of uh, floating point number. I get in x. x is the value whose logarithm I wish to calculate. I calculate w as x minus 1 divided by 1000. What is 1000? I am assuming there are 1000 rectangles. This is my precision. Okay. Or this is my factor. Since w is known, I now set up a loop because I have to sum up 1000 rectangle areas. I run the loop or iterative thing for i equal to 1 to 1000 in steps of 1. By the way, that is the most simplistic meaning of this instruction. Do the repetitive action starting with i equal to 1, in steps of 1, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right up to 1,000. When you finish 1,000, get out. And what is the action you want to do? Calculate the area of the ith rectangle, which is w multiplied by this height, and add it to already existing area. So area is actually a moving sum. Initially, I start with area equal to 0, then I add the area of first rectangle, second rectangle, etc., etc., and all 1,000 rectangles, I will get the final value. Is that clear? This is an example of 
program to compute logarithm. You can actually go back because these slides will be put up on the, on the net. So you can look at those slides. And now if you re-examine the original program which we had seen, you will probably be able to understand it better. This is a small explanation. Ith iteration adds area of ith rectangle. I'm sorry, I think we're exhausting our time. So I will leave this explanation for you to understand. I hope generally the explanation was clear to all of you. This is how you do numerical computations, by the way. 